The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome everyone to the first webinar of a series of webinars uh, of the Combiomed project. Uh, the, this series uh, of uh, webinars is uh, endorsed by the Virtual Physiological Human Institute. Uh, my name is Britt van Roy. I'm a member of the VPH Institute PhD student committee on, uh, on behalf of Combiomed. Combiomed is a user-driven center of excellence uh, in computational biomedicine and um, to, to promote an uptake exploitation of high performance computing within the biomedical modeling community. And the users uh, commun communities come from uh, areas in different areas, so academia, industry, and clinical practice. So the title of today's webinar is HPC simulations of cardiac electrophysiology using patient-specific models of the heart. A special welcome to our speakers, Anna Michelet and Frances Levrero, both from the Computational Cardiovascular Science Group of the University of Oxford. They will present their insights of their latest results on high-performance computational simulation of cardiac diseases uh, sorry, cardiac electrophysiology using patient-specific models of the whole heart. Uh, the webinar will focus on the well-known simulation software Chase and Alia. So Anna, Anna is a senior researcher in the Computational Cardiovascular Science Group. Uh, she received her PhD in Biomedical Engineering from the University of Saragossa in 2011. In 2011. In 2012, she joined the Oxford Cardiovascular Sci Science Group. Um, her current research interests include electrophysiology -physiolo modeling and simulations and biomedical signal and Im image analysis with the aim to understand mechanics and provide bio biomarkers for cardiac diseases, making use of in silico simulation and patient-specific data. Francesca's uh, a research associate, uh, associate in computational cardiovascular science. He finished his PhD, PhD in civil engineering at the University, University of Edinburgh in the topic of multi-scale solid mechanics and HBC applied to trabecular bone. In 2016, he joined the CCS group as part of the Combiomet project uh, and he's in close co uh, in close contact with the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. His topic is the, the study of multi-skill behavior of the human heart under healthy and diseased conditions. So before we start, I'd like to mention if you have any question, you can type them in in the question tab, uh, so in the webinar window. And now I'd like to give the, give the uh, floor to our, our speakers. Hello, good morning. First of all, thanks, all, uh, thanks a lot for registering to this uh, Combiomed uh, webinar. My name is Anna, and uh, this is the outline of uh, the webinar today. We will uh, start 
with the introduction of uh, heart health electrophysiology. Then we will follow with mathematical modeling. And then we will introduce both softwares of today, Chaste and Alia. And finally, we will finish this webinar with the final comments. Well, uh, this is a brief introduction of electrophysiology. The heart is a contracting muscle. It has four chambers, two atria and two ventricles. Those four chain, uh, the right atrium receives blood from the body uh, that it's uh, pulling oxygen and pumps it to the right ventricle that it's here. The, from the right ventricle, the, the, the blood is pumped to the lungs and comes to the left uh, atria that receives a uh, blood rich in oxygen from the lungs and pumps it to the left ventricle. And from here, the left ventricle pumps the oxygen rich blood to the body. Then we have two systems. One is pulmonary that occurs between the heart and the lungs and the other is systemic and occurs between the heart and the body. Uh, we have talked about the mechanical process, but this mechanical process is triggered by electrical uh, activation that I will show you in the next slide. Everything starts in the sinoatrial node. This is the natural pacemaker of the heart and excites the right atria and then the left atria. From some pathways in the right atria, it gets to the atrioventricular nodes, where through the bundle of his, propagates very fast through the septum and then from the bundles to the right and left ventricle that leads to the Purkinje fibers that allow propagation throughout all the endocardium. Then there is a cell-to-cell -cell propagation through gap junctions and stimulate all the heart. So this is a multi-scale process. As you can see, different regions in the heart uh, presents different electrical properties. Here we have action potential. The action potential is the electrical activity of the, of the cell between inside and inside, outside the membrane. Um, it has an activation phase and then it has a repolarization phase. Heterogeneities in activation and repolarization are also reflected at whole organ level, at uh, body surface level, as the electrocardiogram. The electrocardiogram is the electrical activity that is measured at the body, at the torso level by placing some electrodes in our torso. So as I said, this is a multi-scale process. It goes from cell to whole heart, then it propagates to the torso. And from here, if we place some electrodes, we're able to calculate the 12 lead ECGs. We start with cell electrophysiology. As I said, uh, it's, uh, it's called action potential. It has four phases. The first one is the upstroke. Then it has a notch. This is the phase one. Then it has a plateau here. That is the phase two. Then repolarization. And then the phase four is the resting potential. Um, mm, there are ions that travels through the membrane and they are present in different phases of uh, this action potential. In particular, sodium and calcium carbons are involved during the first and second phase of the action potentials. And potassium-based currents are involved in the repolarization phase. Also, other currents like IK1 are involved in the resting, in, in the values of the resting potential. All these cells are connected by junctions, gap junctions, that form what we understand as fiber, uh, cardiac fibers. Through these gap junctions, the cells uh, diffuse easily from cell to cell. So once they are organized by fibers, the electrical activity propagates much faster through the, through the fiber direction and slower perpendicular to it. So as I said, all these electrical properties that goes from ionic current, single cell, tissue, organ, and body, they can be modeled mathematically, that we will explain afterwards, 
In our group, we model from ionic current to single cell, tissue, organ, and body. And um, the idea is that these ionic current models, they, they, uh, they are included in our cell models. They are organized into cardiac fibers that um, belong to a, speci uh, to a specific heart geometry. And this heart can be embedded in a torso. Um, when we simulate electrical activity through all these scales, we are able to have the body surface potentials and from there the ECGs. This is a multi-scale process, so it's computationally very expensive. And then single cell and 2D models, they can be run in a PC while bigger simulations, they need clusters to be, to be run. And now, we will start with the mathematical model, um, Francesc. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks uh, for registering again. And my part that I'll, that I'll give before we go to the explanation of the different software packages we consider is regarding mathematical modeling. So we'll start by a brief explanation of what a cell AP model is. <coughs> AP stands for action potential. Uh, the first one for cardiac cells was was developed by Dennis Noble, who is a, or was, probably still is, uh, an academic in Oxford. Uh, this is the shape of the action potential. You can see it here, and this is a schematic representation of the model with all the currents that, that they're considered in this. Uh, so he developed this, this cardiac cell uh, model based on Hodgkin and Huxley formulations. And even some of the most modern models still use these sort of formulations. We'll see it later. So what do we consider as, as let's say, a gold standard cell model? What we consider is the ohara Rudy model. It's a schematic representation is here. Uh, why do we do it? Basically because it is based on more than 150 human hearts, experiments on these hearts. Uh, some of the ionic currents are still based on the Hodgkin and Huxley formulation, uh, which we can see here. And this is a schematic representation of an ion channel. What Anna said is that the cardiac electrophysiology problem is a multi-scale problem. Why, why did she say that? So uh, here we have maybe the two most employed models of uh, diffusion, electrical diffusion in cardiac tissue. Uh, this is the monodomain and this is the bidomain. Uh, the difference between them is that the bidomain considers different diffusivities for the intracellular domain, so inside of the cell, and extracellular domain outside of the cell, while the monodomain, what it considers is that these two diffusivities are proportional, so they have basically the same directions, and there's only a constant of proportionality which uh, differs. Uh, you retrieve the monodomain model by basically putting this here and then substituting back to the diffusion equation. This is what we see here, basically. When we put all these models together, what we retrieve is this, in this case, the monodomain. But uh, in a way, each term <laughs> represents something different. Uh, this is the diffusivity of the tissue, which is represented by this uh, flash in here. Uh, these ion currents come from the cellular model and are all of these sodium and calcium currents that we saw before. The I steam is the term that I'd like to define here. This is a stimulus current that we use to trigger the problem. So basically, if we don't use uh, a term like this or, or if it's zero throughout the simulation, the model is completely stationary. And when you put a value which is high enough, then it will trigger a pulse, which will propagate through the through the heart, through the cardiac tissue that we are considering. And now I'd like to give a few data, a few characteristics of the software we're considering. First is Chase, which is developed at the University of Oxford. And then Alia, which is, here it stands for High Performance uh, Computational Mechanics, but 
is actually multi-physics. And this one is developed at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. So basically, you can run with both any spatial dimension, ZOD being a cell model, so a system of ODEs, basically. Uh, Chase uses BETC as the linear solver and METIS as the domain decomposition, decomposition method for uh, parallel clusters, basically. While Alia uses in-house linear solvers and METIS as well. Uh, Chase is written in C++ and Alien Modern Fortran, and by modern I mean uh, 95 plus if you want. Uh, to solve the cell action potential models, Chase uses different methods from Euler, Euler, Bagware Euler, Runge Kuta, or any method which is included in the set in the in the software CVOD. While Ali at the moment only uses Forward Euler. Chase is multi-scale as we said before, and Alia is multi-scale and also, in a sense, multi-physics. Uh, you can also calculate CFD if you want, for instance. Both are highly scalable, but I'd like to mention that Alia, uh, the latest test we've seen, uh, mentioned that it scales up to 100,000 cores on NC, NCSA's Blue Waters in the States, the supercomputer. So now I'd like to give the word back to Anna, who will explain a bit more about Chase. Thanks. Okay, I will start by talking a little bit more about the cardiac chase functionalities. Chase um, is a multi-scale simulation package and its name stands for cancer, heart and soft tissue environment. It's a general purpose simulation package and it's aimed at multi-scale computational demanding problems arising in biology and physiology. Chase includes several um, modules. One of them, that is the one that I'm going to talk about, uh, and the one that I'm a user, is the cardiac chase. And these are some of the cardiac chase functionalities. It's uh, able to solve monodomain and also bidomain pro models. They, uh, they have an automatic implementation of cellular action potential models from the cell ML repository, where you can find all, all the cells models uh, in this uh, format, cell ML. It uh, has the automatic generation of mathematical models for fiber orientation, a stricter ever. And then it's able to do checkpoint of simulations midway through run and restart with altered parameters and allows some functionalities for process processing and also output results of the simulations. And it can calculate electrophysiological properties such as action potential duration maps, uh, activation time maps, also conduction velocity. While well, you have a lot of information in this web page and plenty of tutorials and it's very well explained. In this uh, webinar we plan to show you an example of a 2D electrical propagation using chase. In this case we have used a 2D mesh geometry coming from magnetic resonant image. Uh, here we have the left ventricle, yeah, here we have the right ventricle and from here, we were able to develop this uh, 2D mesh. We will start with a very simple example of a controlled 2D electrical propagation in which we will uh, include a stimulation site in the septum. The properties of this simulation is that it's a 2D tissue from MRI, it has this mesh. We will use the O'Hara Rudy 2011 epicardial model. Uh, we, we are not going to include in this example heterogeneity. So in the whole heart, all the cells will uh, behave like this. Then we are using bi-domain model for propagation. We have isotropic conductivities and uh, we will apply a regular stimulus in this site uh, of 600 milliseconds of uh, period. So yes, with these 60 lines of code allows to simulate the electrical activity with the Harvardian model and by domain in Chase. So we can divide the test, this uh, code, in three parts. The first block includes the library. Um, which are the libraries that are included? We have uh, here the test suit to create our Chase test. We have also included uh, Petsy, that is the library for uh, scientific computing and is needed to run cardiac simulations. Then we're going to add 
the bi-domain problem class, as we said that is going to we are going to solve the bi-domain model. Then the class for regular stimulus, we're going to apply a regular stimulus of 600 milliseconds. And then in order to generate and uh, uh, read uh, meshes, tetrahedral and also triangular meshes, we're going to include this class. And finally, the Ohara-Rudy model, um, uh, specifying that we're going to use the numerical solver CBOD, that is an adaptive numerical solver. <coughs> so the second block declares a class that is the cell factory that is needed uh, for cardiac simulations. We define the cell properties for each of the nodes of the 2D geometry. The cell factory tells the problem class what time of, of cardiac cells to create. So for each of the nodes, the coordinates X and Y and y are extracted and if those coordinates belong to the stimulation site that is in the septum as i showed you before then um, we define a point uh, then okay I, I will start here we define a po pointer that is p cell that has the characteristics of the hardwood model and also specifies the way of solving this so then we extract the co coordinates of that uh, specific node and if it belongs to the stimulation region then we uh, we define this stimulus otherwise the cell don't ha won't have any stimulus that is defined as this one and here we have the third block that is the principal class where the, pro uh, the problem is specified and inherits the, the application. We define the problem. We first specify the file path where the mesh is, uh, is located. And then um, we read uh, that mesh. Then we, rec uh, we declare the variables regarding the ODE uh, time steps and the PDE time steps and the printing time. The ODE is used for solving the cell models. The PDE is for you, uh, solving the, the bi-domain PDEs. And the printing time is, uh, tells you how often the output is written to file. We have defined these characteristics. And then uh, we set those characteristics. Then we have the bi-domain parameters in which we specify or we set the surface area to volume ratio, also the capacitance, and then we specify the intracellular and extracellular conductivity since we are using a bi-domain uh, model. Normally, we have here two numbers. Normally, if not five orientations are specified, that is our case, the default longitudinal, that is the first number, and perpendicular directions are the Cartesian. So this is X and Y. As we said before, it's going to be an isotropic propagation. And then we specify the simulation time, that is uh, 1,200 milliseconds. Then, as we said before, Chase provides with functionalities uh, allow, allowing um, post-processing and also output results. We have made use of, uh, in this example, of the functionality of getting an APD map, action potential and duration map, in which for each of the uh, nodes of our mesh, we will have the duration of the action potentials. Then we have used also the activation time maps that tells us when the, the, the cell has been activated, then the max, uh, maximum abstract velocity map, and then, we, and then we have some output options that tells you which is the directory in, in which the results are going to be stored, and also uh, the name, uh, the prefix name. And also, we are specifying that the output, uh, output results are going to use the original node ordering as the mesh that we uh, use as, as an input. Then we said that we don't want to save our, our results in this uh, format, the mesh analyzer 
program that opens that four months. And we are saving in parallel VTK. Um, we have to say that we have saved also an H5 format, uh, the results in this in its format. And then we specify the period of the regular stimulus that is going to be 600 milliseconds. Then we make an instance to the cell factory here with the period of the stimulus that is 600. And finally, we define the problem uh, as a bi-domain problem with the previously defined uh, cell factory. And then we initialize and we solve it. And this is uh, the results that we obtain by running this uh, test. Uh, we have here the APD map, as we are expecting, we have similar values, APD values in all the geometry. Then the activation time map that starts uh, from the septum and then it propagates. And then similar uh, maximum absolute velocities all over the, the tissue. And here, of course, we have uh, shown the results that are the voltage, the voltage uh, that is now is activated. And this is millivolts, 40 millivolts, and now it's repolarizing. Now we are going to increase the difficulty. We're going to include in our example uh, a region of ischemia, ischemia in the anterior region. As you know, electrophysiological changes are arising from, from ischemia. The main ones are hyperkalemia that is an increased uh, extracellular potassium concentration. Normally, under control conditions, we have about 5 millimolars, but we are going to set it to 8.5 millimolars. Then hypoxia, that is a reduction of oxygen, that is normally modeled by activating FK ATP channels 4%, and acidosis, that is modeled as a decrease of uh, the sodium and L-type calcium currents. We're going to decrease it. 25 percent. Here we, ha we have an example of what we are expected to observe. Here we have an action potential of a control in blue and an action potential of an ischemic cell in red. The hyperkalemia increases the resting potential, the hypoxia decreases the action potential duration, and acidosis decreases the amplitude and also decreases the slope of the upstroke. And uh, the O'Hara-Rudy model doesn't have uh, those characteristics, or we had to include the FK ATP channels. So here there is a reference to, to uh, that tells us the, the model that we have used that is based on the O'Hara-Rudy model. So the main differences are the following. We have declared uh, as attributes the three components of the ischemia as members of the cell factory class, and they are also specified in the constructor. And then um, we have included also um, this line here. It, it was if uh, the node is in the stimulus region to this, if it's in this ischemic region, then we will um, set the extracellular potassium concentration to the new value. We will get the parameters of the fast sodium current conductance and also the L-type calcium current conductance. And we multiply them by the scaling factor that we define in the constructor. And finally, we will set the ATP-dependent potassium current conductance to the value that we have uh, telling the problem. And of course, we have specified those parameters in the definition of the problem in the third block. Okay, and these are the results. We can observe here that we have shorter APD values as expected in all the ischemic region. We have also um, the activation time map. We cannot, um, we cannot see that Normally, in the ischemic region, it's uh, the activation time maps get the conduction velocity gets slower, but we can see it here. Here we have uh, we see that the maximum upstroke velocities are slower in the ischemic region. 
and here we have the 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 voltage. Uh, now the is uh, the, the cell is depolarized and now it's repolarizing. Re okay, and we are going to complicate it a little bit more. That it's just like including also an ectopic activity close to the border zone of the ischemic region. So in order to do this, the only thing that we have done is like including as a class the simple stimulus and also in the cell factory defining it. Uh, and this is uh, the amplitude of the stimulus, the duration of the stimulus and uh, the time in which you have to apply that stimulus. And also you define the ectopic region that it's an ellipsoid uh, in which you define the center, you define the radius, and if the cell is in that region, then we will apply the, this stimulus at the, the specific time. And this is the, the results. Now it's uh, depolarized, now it's repolarizing. The ectopic uh, stimulus is in 250 milliseconds, so we had a conduction block in this chemical area, and it's the, this geometry uh, facilitates a, a, a re-entry. We observe like how it's coming back and it's not uh, uh, repolarizing. Okay. Well, and uh, we can complicate things more. We're not going to show examples now about the chase codes, but we are going to show the results of uh, 3D simulations in chase. Here we have a biventricular mesh uh, in which we have specified an ischemic area, but here in this case we have also specified our uh, border zone area next to the next to the epicardium, but also in the endocardium. And also we have complicated this a little bit more by including the physiological transmural heterogeneities from epicardium having a, a shorter action potentials to endocardium having a longer action potentials. And in this specific uh, work, we were also uh, applying an ectopic activity close to the border zone. You will see it here. And conduction block and re-entry. And we observe, we are seeing how it looks like this arrhythmia. The good thing of uh, multi-scale simulation and mathematical models is that if you're interested in a particular area and a particular time frame, you can choose it and you can see what is happening at cell level. And you observe that there is some abnormalities at cell level. And now our group is also moving to personalization of MRIs. Uh, oops, I think it hasn't moved. Sorry, could you see my screen? Yes, you can. Okay, now? Yes. Is there anyone? Okay, that's working. So we are moving, uh, we have a research line that is personalization of anatomical models. Uh, we start from MRI acquisitions. We use localizer that are the, some images that the uh, clinical doctor uses to locate the heart and we segment uh, uh, the torso of uh, those from those images. Also, you, we use the Cine MRI in which we have the four chambers view and short axis view, and we have segmentations in order to construct the heart. So from here, we construct the heart. From the localizer, we construct, and together with a, with a statistical model, we, we construct the the surface uh, of the torso. So finally, we end up with this kind of geometrical models of uh, personalized to, to each of the patients. Once we have this, we need to parameterize with an action potential model, as we said, and all the heterogeneity that you want to include in your, in your geometry. Also, we include fiber orientations. As I said before, 
the electric, electrical activity goes faster along the, the fiber direction and slower perpendicular to it. And then we have to set or uh, we have to, to, to set an activation model to, to simulate Purkinje. And then we're able to simulate the electrical activity with all these ingredients from ionic uh, level to whole organ and then to whole body. And by, of course, placing some electrodes in the body, we're able to simulate the 12 lead uh, electrocardiogram. And uh, this is uh, one of the examples uh, that we have. And here we have the, tw the 12 lead ECGs. And now it's repolarizing. OK. And just, uh, just uh, the last slide to say that computer simulations can explain cardiac phenotypes and we can use this kind of uh, multi-scale simulations to, to, to be able to extract some information from these cardiac phenotypes at ECG level. And then we go to Elio. Hello, this is Francesc Dem, so I'll be explaining a little bit more about Thalia. So these are additional functionalities that I didn't mention before. Uh, we have one of the main and by the main models available for the tissue propagation. In terms of uh, action potential models, cellular action potential models, we don't have that huge variety of chains because we don't have this implementation of, of Cell ML, but we do have a few quite relevant ones, uh, Fitsunagumo, Hara Rudy, and Ten Tusher. And at the moment, they are hard coded, but we're working on um, an easy interface to be able to easily implement new ones. Uh, the bidirectional electromechanical coupling <laughs> is, is implemented on fully functional. And by bidirectional, I mean from electrical to mechanical and from mechanical to electrical. And I will explain a little bit more about this later. Excitation contraction coupling models and stretch activated ion channels are also implemented. And this also comes when I mentioned the bidirectionality of the coupling. Alia is highly efficient and highly scalable, as I mentioned before, uh, like tests on like hundreds, thousands of cores, 100,000 cores have been already performed on, on American supercomputers, and the scalability is almost linear, so quite impressive. And you can use other physics, so you're not limited to only electromechanics. You can use combustion, like CFD, even chemical diffusion, and so on. This is an example that I will show the input files later. It's a biventricular model, 5 million nodes and 32 million elements. It's run on my Nostrum 4 on 2000 course and it runs in 15 minutes but I'd like to mention here that around 10-12 minutes of that time is actually spent on pre-processing so the actual running is really just a few minutes so it's really really fast. Uh, the example that I'm going to show contains four input files in ASCII format which is quite a straightforward uh, format and we'll see it later and this example is just electrical propagation and we'll see it here. We start from the root nodes that simulate uh, where the Purkinje fiber, when the bundle of his actually meets the endocardium, and then there is a fast, I'll run it again, there is a fast propagation through the endocardium, and then it diffuses through the rest of cardiac tissue. Now it's polarizing, and there we go. Again, just in case, because the internet connections are supposed to be playing some games now. Yeah. And now it's repolarizing. Yeah, okay. I'll show a small example later of an electromechanical, a small electromechanical simulation. And don't get too scared by these equations. It's just that I want to explain why, what this bidirectionality of the coupling means. So this is our solid mechanics problem, equations of motion and the corresponding stress strain constitutive law. This is the uh, Ogden, uh, Holzapfel and Ogden model, an, an isotropic model. Uh, this is an active contraction model, what I mentioned before uh, as 
excitation contraction model. It's a set of ODEs that, when solved, allows for an explicit calculation of the active stress in the fiber direction. These are the, the activation uh, stretch activated ion channels. They have a similar structure to the Hodgkin and Huxley, but they are instead activated by a stretch. This is the stretch, the mechanical stretch. So when, when there is a certain stretch level, then these channels open and, and current goes through. The, so this active contraction model that I mentioned is what I would call the um, electromechanical coupling. So the electrical problem affects the mechanical problem. And these two here, stretch activated ion channels, and this modified monodomain equation, mono, it's modified because there is a pullback, oh, sorry, there is a pullback of the diffusivity tensors here. Uh, what it does is basically solving the, the problem on the undeformed, undeformed mesh, sorry. This is what I would call um, mechanoelectric feedback. So the mechanical problem affects the electrical problem. And these terms is what I defined before as bidirectionality. So this is a, a, a small electromechanical example that I mentioned. It's basically a small piece of tissue run locally, just four cores. It takes a few minutes. And it's a comparison between two different excitation contraction coupling models, Hunter here and Land here. Land is a very recent excitation contraction coupling model. That... Hello? I, okay, yeah. Having told that there was a, a problem with the sound, now it seems to be back. So this is how it contracts. We trigger, I'll run it again. We trigger an electrical pulse in this end and it propagates contracting the tissue as the electrical wave passes by. Okay. So Alia has, as I mentioned, four different input files. Uh, the dat file, dom dat file, care dat file, and exm dat file. I'll show it later. Um, so these are two of the different input files, the dat and the dom dat. What they define is different parts of the problem. For instance, the dat file defines the general data of the problem as the name you want to give to your simulation, the maximum number of steps, the time interval your simulation is considering. And uh, if your simulation is single physics or multi physics, this dollar sign is a comment. So basically, this is not active. If I uncomment this, this could be a, a multi physics simulation. So uh, excitation media, so like electrical propagation and mechanical contraction. The DOM that file defines the geometry, the domain of our problem, defines things as the nodes, number of elements, the spatial dimensions the type of element we're considering, if we have any boundaries that we want to define uh, boundary conditions on, uh, rules of integration. But we also need to include here things as, as a geometry, the, the connectivity of the mesh, the, the coordinates of the nodes, what sort of stimuli we want to consider, and so on. Just before I go on, I just wanted to say that if you have any specific doubt, you want to know something specific, you have the documentation of Alia in this link. And I didn't mention it before, but uh, I was told yesterday that if you want to use Alia, you have two options. One of them is through any Praise supercomputer, you should be able to use the compiled executable without any problem. Or another option is contacting is contacting, uh, I'll give you the email later, Mariano Vázquez from Barcelona Supercomputing Center, and you should be able to get Alia without any problem. Uh, these two files that I'm showing here are the curdat and the xmdat. Uh, the curdat just defines just very few additional data that you need to solve the problems, such as when you want to output and what you want to output. So in this case, we're outputting on the phone mesh, and each 50 steps of our simulation, we're gonna dump results on the on the hard drive. Uh, what I said is that if you consider a multi-physics problem, you don't really need to consider coupling, but if you want to consider the coupling between the different physics that you're considering, you need to activate these lines here. For instance, you could be running a, I don't know, a, 
um, electrics and mechanics problem, which are not coupled, but they act at the same time. But if you want them to interact with each other, you need, you need to activate this. The XM, that gives information or needs information about your electrical diffusion problem. You need to, to state what are the electrical stimuli here. Um, you need to define also the, the electrical properties of your different materials. You can include different materials, different subdomains within your domain if you want. Uh, you need to define the fibers and the cell type. And also, last but not least, you have to define what are the numerical solvers if you want. So you need to define the linear solver in this case and also the time integration, which is defined here. This safety factor is basically um, it has to do with the time step that we are considering. It, it is saying here that we're considering a time step which is 25 times larger than the critical time step for uh, explicit integration. And just to conclude, uh, I'd just like to mention that uh, in these models we are considering, we are actually modeling quite complex physical and biological phenomena. Um, obviously, the mathematical techniques are not straightforward are not simple, but uh, I mean, with, with the appropriate code and supercomputing platforms, we, we are able to do that. Uh, the biventricular simulations we're considering are fairly large, a few million nodes and several tens of millions of elements. So we need the supercomputer, basically, unfortunately. Uh, another thing is that our current research is aiming at trying to solve clinical problems and also assessing the effect of drugs, drugs, I mean like cardiac drugs on the, on the heart. With these sort of models, we're sort of aiming at substituting current protocols for a completely in silico, so completely computational or mathematical protocols, so that basically we don't uh, put the lives of people of, or animals in danger. And these tools allow us to explain some of the abnormalities we observe in the ECG and this is super relevant just in case you want to solve for instance the inverse problem when you get an ECG and you want to know what's actually happening in the heart this is actually very very relevant clinically clinically speaking and just to conclude I'd like to just show the people the acknowledgements the people we collaborate and, and that have contributed in this webinar. So thank you and uh, I've been told that there are not too many questions so uh, if you have any questions please write them now and we'll be, we'll be collecting them and answering them as soon as we, we get them basically. Just a second please. No question for oh, Chase, right? Okay. Mm, yeah, so we've received a question about uh, what are the possibilities of defining ischemic regions in the heart for simulations? Okay, um, so I mean it, it, it is possible with actually both softwares. Uh, Anna has showed the, the possibility in Chase, but I can tell you you can also do the same. You just need to be in Alia, you just need to define another region with those characteristics and just join them together with the healthy regions. But it, it is possible with, with both software. Any more questions? Yes, there's another question from Jenny. Can you see that? Okay. Uh, wait a second. I mean, we have several computers here showing. Uh, you don't see any other question. I can read it for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Great yes. presentation. Just wondering what kind of okay. testing is done for Chase and Alia packages. Could you repeat the question? Sorry. Just yes. wondering what kind of routine testing is done for Chase and Alia packages. Okay, uh, Anna will answer about Chase. I can answer about Ali if you want. Um, no. 
Okay, what well, protein testing? Yeah, so um, I mean, with in terms of validation, I, I don't know what exactly testing means here, but I'm just going to ask. In terms of validation, I mean, obviously, every time we do a simulation, we compare the results with literature or, or experiments of our collaborators. So that's not a problem in terms of, as I said, validation. Uh, and there is a daily testing check uh, with Alia, basically, too. If, if there are some changes that have been uploaded to the to the trunk and the results change, obviously this is highlighted so that uh, basically the, the problem is solved if, if, if there is a mismatch between results. Uh, and now I'll let Anna answer about Chase. Hello, yes. So I'm seeing very similar things in Chase. Everything that uh, they are uh, routinely test to check that everything is working pro properly. Uh, indeed, there are like several tests that are run uh, for each modification that is done to the code. Uh, so yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing more to say. Uh, we have received another question that is, have you attempted this modeling in the atria as well as the ventricles? And have you expanded to model arrhythmias? Yes, not myself, but there are people in the group that uh, has uh, model uh, the atria and has model uh, atrial fibrillation and arrhythmias. So yeah, yeah, you 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 can find it. I mean, I can send you if you send me an email. I can send you some references from from the group. People like Carlos Sanchez, Ana Muskevich, they have uh, done these kind of simulations. Um, yeah, there is another question from John Wormsley, also talking about chaste, and in this one is uh, that there is, uh, several years ago, there was an implementation of mechanics in chaste. Do you know if there are plans to integrate this with electrophysiology at any point? Mm, not by now, but uh, we're open to do it, but uh, we're not working in this line by now. Okay, hey, Francis, do you want to answer? Which one? Oh, okay. Uh, related to the validation procedure, this is a question of Eduardo Souda. Do you know CARTO software? CARTO software is the clinical tool to study the voltage in the heart. Have you compared your results against CARTO? Yes, we know what CARTO is. Uh, and uh, we, I mean, we don't personalize the, uh, all the electrophysics. It's impossible to personalize all the electrophysiology in the heart because we are different. We have uh, variations from patient to patient, also from region to region. But we use CARTO, we are using CARTO in some of the projects that we are uh, developing in order to feed with that information that is measures of the electrical activity in the endocardium or epicardium uh, to, give the, uh, to insert that information in our, in our models. And like this, we can parameterize our models with uh, patient-specific data. Okay, uh, there is another question about this. Is the Oharudi model, uh, this software used the 211 or modified? Where to get the modified? We are using a um, modified model, but uh, because the original hardware the model didn't um, didn't show the expected electrophysiological uh, changes under ischemic conditions and that's why we have uh, published uh, the modified hardware the model also with the fk atp channels uh, in the paper that i showed it's a uh, data in pbms in the this year I mean, uh, 2000, 
17. If you send, ask me for the code, I can send it to you. Okay, there is Francesca back. There is another question saying, is, is it possible to communicate both codes? What would you get from that? Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> it is not possible. I don't think it's going to happen because, you know, in principle, both um, relevant physics are considered in, in either of them. So there's no need to, to do that. There is another question question here saying, hi, really nice talk. Are you planning to extend Chase added to be running GPUs? I'm not so sure about Chase. I think there is no plan to do that in GPUs, but I can tell you there is a, a few people in Barcelona Supercomputing Center working with GPUs. So as far as I know, the work done with respect to GPUs on Alia is to implement linear solvers, which are GPU based. Um, I think that's I think that's everything but there might be something else but if you want if you if you leave your email here I can send you some some information about it but I'm pretty sure that at least there is work done on linear solvers based on GPU linear solving is is where where like 60 70 80 percent of the of the time is spent in like big simulations so uh, that's that's where where the focus needs to be is to be done I hope I ask your question. I ask, I answer your question. So, but as I said, if you leave the email, I'll send you something, some information about it. Uh, is there any other question? Because I think we've. I think you answered them all. All of them. Yes. Oh One yes. Time. And then we'll yeah. Uh, let Let me see how how to answer that. If we can write or something. Yes. Okay. What what we'll do instead is we'll we'll put the our, our emails. So if you need anything, just email us. Okay. So mine is this. Okay. The path. Did I? Oh. Yeah. Okay. This is mine. mine. This is. Mine is. Anna's. Uh, here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here, example. Mm -hmm. So where are you writing it, Francesc? We're writing it as answers to all in okay. the question tab. Yes. Should okay. be fine, right? Yeah, that's great. Yes. So, so I hope everyone has received our email addresses. Yes, great. If that's the case, uh, if you have any further questions, please just send send us an email. It should be fine. Yes. And if you want any information regarding GPUs or regarding regarding the atria atrial work, just just send us an email, please. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think that's that's it then. Yeah. Shall I close uh, the webinar then? Thank you very much for presenting mm -hmm. and. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for attending. Thanks to everyone for registering. Yeah. And um, all the material of the webinar you can find on the Combiomed website and the VPH Institute website. So if you want to see it back, you can uh, find the recording over there. And please fill in a, a, a small feedback questionnaire uh, that will appear if you close this uh, webinar panel. Um, yeah, thank you and hope you, to see you in the, on the next series of, of the Combiomed webinars. Bye. <laughs>